She's in Balmoral in a Highland retreat, and by coincidence, her annual stay at Balmoral is coinciding with the independence referendum campaign. In early 2014, the campaign to leave had been trailing in the polls. But by the time the Queen came to Balmoral for her summer break, the Scottish nationalists had narrowed the lead. In the last couple of weeks, the yes campaign and the no campaign were effectively neck and neck. There is a real sense of emergency taking hold in London, and a sense too that the Queen actually could be the ace for the, for the UK campaign, that she's the person that's actually going to have to intervene to make absolutely certain that they were going to win the no vote. Despite all of her instincts to stay out of the race, despite all of her instincts that it's not constitutionally proper, there is an immense amount of pressure being brought to bear on her. Just four days before the referendum, the Queen made an unprecedented comment. Veteran reporter Jim Lawson was, as usual, covering her Balmoral stay. We were in a normal place, corralled outside the church grounds. After about half an hour, a policeman came down and said, would you like to come up to the church? That was unheard of, you know. We actually wondered what was going on. And I thought, I wonder if she's going to approach the crowd. As she did, one of the bystanders mentioned the referendum. The Queen said, well, I hope people will think very carefully about the future. The bystander was happy to tell Jim the Queen's comment, but curiously wouldn't give him their details. If the Queen talks to someone, they're always delighted to tell you, but not this time. Some wondered whether the bystander had been planted in the crowd. Others thought it was just a chance comment. Either way, the newspapers needed to corroborate the story with Buckingham Palace. The palace didn't confirm it, but more importantly, they didn't deny it. We knew we were onto some story there. Now, if you translate that to your standing on the edge of the cliff and the Queen says to you, think very carefully about what you're about to do, she's not advising you to jump, is she? Newspaper editor Severin Carell felt the comment was the result of a lot of thought. One could read it either way. And as in that sense, it was very, very, very carefully written, very cleverly written. But we realised that the Queen had made a quite deliberate and quite carefully drafted interjection. She had intervened into the referendum campaign. On Thursday, the 18th of September, 2014, Scotland went to the polls. The majority of the people voting have voted no to the referendum question. I have worked so hard to save Scotland because I'm a proud Scot and I'm a proud Brit. Ladies and gentlemen, I think that's been a pretty fair kick of the ball. For now, the Queen's United Kingdom was intact. But this wouldn't be the last time that her position would be used in politicians' arguments. In 2016, David Cameron held the second referendum of his prime ministership. This time, the question was to leave or remain in the European Union. On Monday, I will commence the process set out under our Referendum Act, and I will go to Parliament and propose that the British people decide our future in Europe. In the charged atmosphere of the EU debate, it was perhaps inevitable that someone would try to involve the Queen in their argument. Thomas Newton Dunn is political editor of The Sun, he was tipped off about a conversation between the Queen and European Union supporter Nick Clegg. Well, I was told a, a most fascinating story by a, a impeccable source uh, of an extraordinary row during a, a lunch she held in Windsor Castle. And so this is going back 2011, 2012 now. Uh, they ended up discussing Europe. Uh, the Queen ended up getting into quite a lively dust-up with the Deputy Prime Minister, who was a very strong uh, pro-European politician. The Queen was putting forward some very strong views uh, on the, the future shape of Europe and the direction in which Europe was going in. The Sun wasn't only planning to report the alleged conversation, but to boost it by quoting prominent Brexiteers. This led to their infamous headline. Queen backs Brexit came from ringing up a couple of Tory MPs to, to find out what they thought about it. Uh, and some of the very passionate Brexiteer MPs leaped on the suggestion that we might be pretty Eurosceptic to say, well, in which case, that must mean she backs Brexit. But very closely written underneath was, 
bombshell claim, because, of course, it was these MPs' claim she must back Brexit rather than ours. When Downing Street found out that The Sun was going to run with the headline, they began to investigate the source of the story. So when I first saw the Queen backs Brexit headline, I wanted to see very quickly, well, what was this based on? And it seemed to be at a lunch that had been many years before. How could she back have something several years before when it wasn't even a term that was invented or even something that was seen as a particular possibility? Nick Clegg strongly denied the story. I think it's appalling that people who want to drag the United Kingdom out of the European Union uh, now want to drag the Queen into the European referendum debate. And as for the, the Sun story, it's nonsense. It is not true. I couldn't be clearer than that. The palace thought that the headline was misleading and immediately lodged a complaint to the Independent Press Standards Organization. At the time, the palace said they were extremely angry uh, and the Queen is never to be dragged into politics and they're now going to put a stop to it by making a formal complaint. They wanted to draw a line in the sand and, and to extricate the Queen from any more uh, political rows. Ipso upheld the complaint, saying the headline went further than the claim about what the Queen might think. The Sun was forced to print its ruling, but by then, the whole story had fueled the Brexit debate. I don't know that you could necessarily say that it persuaded people to vote for Brexit, but I think it was certainly another tick in the column of people who wanted to leave the EU. We know from occasional slippages that she obviously does have personal political opinions, but in public, in terms of aura, she exudes impartiality. She exudes being what a constitutional monarch should be, above politics, above opinion. As head of state, the Queen has battled to stay out of politics, but at times she needs to be at the forefront of Britain's national events and disasters. In 2017, the world woke up to one of the most shocking tragedies of recent times, the Grenfell Tower fire. Where the fire was now spreading, people were reaching out from the front window, trying to grasp a bit of fresh air, trying to breathe. It looked like they were struggling. It was harrowing, torturing screams for help. It was honestly like a horror movie. When the fire got to its peak point, I could actually hear a man screaming, and then all of a sudden, the screaming just stopped. In the past, the Queen has been criticised for her slow response. In the 60s, she waited eight days before visiting the victims of the Abba Van disaster, an accident in a Welsh mining town which claimed the lives of 28 adults and 118 children. It was a sort of lesson for us all. You have the need to show sympathy and to be there on the spot, which I think people crave from her. In her later reign, she's made sure that she makes a rapid response. Just 48 hours after the Grenfell Tower disaster, the Queen came to see the relief effort. One of the first charities to help at Grenfell was the British Red Cross. Mike Adamson is their chief executive. I think the visit of the Queen showed that the nation stood in solidarity with the community at Grenfell and that that community had not been forgotten and people wanted to express their empathy um, for the experience that they had had. And the Queen, I think, has a unique ability to do that because of the way in which she conducts herself with such dignity and a sort of quiet, caring approach. And she went immediately to greet people, um, to say hello and how are you and this was a big event affecting a lot of people in our country she just showed her sympathy and empathy and tried to reach out and um, wanted to be there to help it was very moving it's actually bringing tears to my eyes um, to see her here it shows that she is sincere and she truly cares she looked at me directly in my eyes and I could see that she cares 